subjective medical evidence, and your fibromyalgia long-term disability claim. I bet when you bought your disability insurance policy, you didn't think you were going to be in for a fight to get those benefits that you deserve because of fibromyalgia. Disability insurance companies uh, operate under what I call the golden rule. They're more than happy to collect your premium, but when you apply for your disability benefits, they're not shy about ruling that you're not entitled to your disability insurance benefits. Disability carriers don't always contest the diagnosis of fibromyalgia in a claim if it's made based on the 2010 ACR preliminary diagnostic criteria. Now, the carrier's going to look at your records and they're going to see if there's a history of widespread pain, repeated manifestations of six or more fibromyalgia symptoms, signs, or co-occurring conditions. And they'll be looking for the fact that evidence of other disorders that could cause these repeated manifestations has been excluded. Now, disability carriers will always question the severity of the symptoms and whether or not your symptoms are disabling based on the definition of disability in your disability insurance policy. Before you stop work and apply for your benefits or appeal a wrongful denial of your claim, you have to understand how carriers question the subjective medical evidence in a fibromyalgia claim. Let's talk about first what is subjective medical evidence. Now, subjective evidence is just that. When you see your doctor, you complain of symptoms that are consistent with a diagnosis of fibromyalgia. But people don't always present with objective medical testing or objective findings on examination that quantify the severity of the symptoms or how those symptoms impact your functionality. So, for example, you may complain of body-wide pain, joint pain, fatigue, or problems with concentration or staying on task. Now, it can be hard for your doctor to find objective evidence on every physical examination that supports the level of your complaints. But nonetheless, your doctor probably believes and supports your claim for your disability insurance benefits. Group disability carriers like Lincoln, uh, New York Life, or private disability carriers like uh, Unum, Northwestern, or Dearborn, disregard or even discount your subjective complaints in deciding to pay your benefits or to even terminate your disability benefits. So in my view, it's crucial that there be medical evidence and even statements of you and your family and friends that substantiate and quantify the nature of your symptoms, the extent of your symptoms, the duration of your symptoms, and the frequency of your symptoms. Why? Carriers will often minimize the complaints of a fibromyalgia policyholder. They try to use a one-size-fits-all in analyzing the claim. Your level of pain, your discomfort, your disability are personal to you. And I know, representing many clients who have fibromyalgia, that it can vary from day to day, week to week, and even month to month. So I think it's important that documenting and quantifying your unique symptoms are the key to getting your benefits. That should be documented in your medical records and if necessary give your doctor a uh, what I call an interval history. You can do that by keeping a pain diary. Now the pain diary has got to be accurate and not exaggeration. You also can do that by submitting statements to the disability insurance company of your family members or friends. I also think that you have to have your doctor complete a fibromyalgia residual disability capacity form, like the one I use in Social Security Disability Claims, as an adjunct or an addition to an attending physician statement form. Those forms don't ask the right questions on purpose. And it may be necessary for you to undergo objective testing, like a CPET exam, a functional capacity evaluation, or even neurocognitive testing to document not only the fact that you have restrictions and limitations, but how those restrictions and limitations impact your ability to do your own or any occupation. Now, in addition to not liking fibromyalgia claims, the carrier may have a tool in their toolbox that can let them deny your claim after two years. What's that called? It's a subjective medical condition limitation clause. And what it says is that medical conditions that are subjective in nature or characterized by pain, fatigue, headaches, uh, body-wide um, aches um, are by their nature subjective and are just limited to two years. 
Worse yet, your policy may even list fibromyalgia specifically as one of the conditions that are limited to just two years of benefits. Wow, you need to understand the policy limitations that can impact your claim before you stop work and apply for benefits. And if your claim has been denied, you should be consulting with an experienced ERISA disability attorney such as myself. We're going to secure a copy of your file. Read it cover to cover. Take on the disability carrier's liar for hire doctor who has said that you have no restrictions or limitations or their vocational evaluator who says that you can work. Look, my daughter has fibromyalgia and I know um, how to gather, develop, and frame evidence in a fibromyalgia claim so that you get your disability benefits that you deserve. I make it my life's work and passion to specialize in uh, disability insurance claims and I've taken on disability carriers across the nation in fibromyalgia disability claims. I'm not afraid of the defenses that disability carriers will throw out or tools that they will use to try to deny or terminate a disability insurance claim. I can help you submit your disability insurance claim, appeal a wrongful denial or termination, file a lawsuit in federal court, and even negotiate a lump sum settlement. Call me today at 727-894-3188 for a complimentary consultation. I want you to know what your rights are to your disability insurance benefits because of fibromyalgia. Call today at 727-894-3188.